Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on convalescent plasma for COVID-19. So what is convalescent plasma? So when a patient is infected with the coronavirus and as it enters the cell, it starts replicating and starts making copies of itself. But the innate immunity fights against the viral replication. They also call in the B lymphocytes, which produce the immunoglobulins and produce the humoral immunity and the T lymphocytes, which produce the cytotoxic immunity and remove the virus leading cells. Here we will be discussing primarily the B lymphocytes and the immunoglobulins that are produced and how can we use them for the treatment of the patient. So when a patient is infected with the coronavirus and there is an adequate immune response, they produce a lot of immunoglobulins. So when the patient is recovered, we can collect the blood of the patient. Now this blood contains 50% plasma, 42% red blood cells and the rest are platelets. The plasma is separated from the whole blood of a recovered patient. This is called the convalescent plasma. This contains antibodies against the COVID-19 and can be infused to sick patients. So let's see how this was used in five critically ill patients in China. This paper was published in JAMA last month. So let's look at the characteristics of the patient. Three were male, two were female. The patient four was in her 30s while the rest were 50 years or more. None were smokers. None had any causic skin disease except patient number two who had hypertension and mitral insufficiency. The interval between admission and plasma infusion was 20 days in all the patients except two who received the plasma in 10 days. All of the patients had severe ARDS. Patient one and two had bacterial pneumonia and two also had fungal pneumonia. The point to be noted is all the patients received methylprednisolone and antivirals for treatment. Which patients were chosen? Patients with lab confirmed COVID-19 infection were chosen who had a respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation, shock requiring the use of vasopressors with elevated lactate more than 2 or organ failure requiring admission to the intensive care unit. Donors the five donors of the convalescent plasma were between the age of 18 to 60 years. The donors had been doing well, that is, they were asymptomatic for at least 10 days. The serum for SARS-CoV-2 ELISA had a titer higher than 1 to 1000 dilution and a neutralizing antibody greater than 40. 400 ml of the convalescent plasma was obtained from each patient by aphoresis and the plasma was immediately transferred to the recipient on the same day it was obtained. <clears throat> so the dose of convalescent plasma that was given was 400 ml to each of the patients. So let's see what happened once we infuse the plasma. Here we see the bacterial negativity. We can see that most of the patient became negative by day 12. Here we see the PF ratios. All the PF ratios which are below 300 became almost more than 300 by 12 days. The SOFA scores also improved. The SOFA scores, especially of the patient 2, reduced from up to 10 to less than 4 at the end of 12 days. In terms of body temperature also, we see the improvement. There is a gradual decrease in the body temperature. Look into the limitations of this study. It was very small with only 5 patients, no control group. So we don't know if it was not given what would have happened. Multiple agents were given like methylprednisol and antiviral. Transfusion was done late, that is 10 to 20 days, and its effect on mortality is unknown. So what is our take home? The convalescent plasma may be tried. There is a strong physiological basis and there is no evidence of any harm. But be aware of the risk of rally in these patients. Timing may be early. Once there is a evidence of organ failure or ARDS, it may prevent the patient from becoming more and more sick. Thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.